So how? So so I guess You've like already forgotten my name. It's great. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, after I call, I mean, I did it last episode too when I was sober with the tea people. I had to re- just scratch it and restart the whole thing. I'm trying. Which I may do on this one. You never know. So how like how did you guys go from originally with the indie car to on the house? Because I mean, they're, they're, I mean, they're two separate things. But like, were you guys just kind of coming up like? Uh, what's a better way to reach like a bigger audience or pretty much yeah we kind of played plateau with the hospital we've had, we have a lot of hospitality employees on on indy card in denver um and we wanted to figure out a way to to add obviously more people outside of the hospitality industry and add value to the venues and brands that we work with you know and give the everyday consumer a good way to go explore their neighborhoods their communities and still have that feeling of being taken care of nice yeah I mean, I think it's a great concept. And the indie card, like you said, like it was a little more exclusive. This is to everybody. And if you think about all those white collared folks that are downtown in this area, you know, it's for everything from lunch to dinner and, you know, just grabbing cocktails. You can grab a freebie or you can cop a. I'm a big fan of cheese sticks. So if you can snag the app right before the entree, you're playing with the house's money. Exactly. Plus, if it's only $9.99 a month, I mean, shit, an average cocktail is. Ten to twelve dollars. So use it once and it's paid for. Yeah. Yeah. It's kinda like a condom. Uh, what's it called? <laughs> so, onward and upward. Um, we've talked enough about business. I want y'all to take off the the on the house apps. Take take the hats off. Mm-hmm. All right. So we want to get to know the guys behind it. We're gonna start with Braden because he looks like he makes his own music. But uh, what was the kind of music you <laughs> what was on the Spotify when you were on your way over today? Oh, what was I listening to earlier? Um at, all day. God, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna blank on this it's okay. question. Just stew on it, and we can kind of make stew. it. Yeah. I have been listening to. I just I don't want to fucking lie. I'm gonna look at my Spotify. How about that? I'll jump in. You want to hear? I, I'm going to Mexico in a couple of days, so I've been listening to a lot of uh, uh, tropical remixes. Trump yeah. <laughs> Damn it, Chris! This is an office. It's, you get I, I know what I've been listening to now. Okay, what was it? Prodigy, Mob Deep. Whoa. <laughs> That's what I've been listening to. I've it's been taking back, it back, man. dude. I've been taking it back today. Well, you know, the thing is, is I've been kind of melancholy with this whole Kobe Bryant thing. You dude, know, it's got me in the dumps. And so I've been listening to some, like, old school hip hop. It's, like, not cheery hip hop. Right. You know, it's, like, you know, the stories from the streets, which, you know, like, I guess console me. It's, like, what I, my nerdy ass grew up listening to. So. And I mean, we have Stevie singing "Landslide" right behind us, as you mentioned. Kobe. That is that is actually stoic. It's such a nice ambiance in here. With that, it's just so comforting. It is. Very we nice. try to make sure that everyone feels at home. From the cheap warm vodka I keep stored at my desk to the vape pen sponsors that got us lit. Okay, so you said you're Miles. You said you're going to. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to Mexico in a few days. Yeah, Where are you Mexico? going to Mexico for like a, a band's event? Like, uh, I'm not. Like I'm Panic actually in La Playa, or I, is this more like a DJ set. This is. <laughs> I'm taking my girlfriend for her birthday. Where to? Uh, we're going to Tulum. Nice. nice. What? In, uh, what? In our buddy just there? We just had a friend. Dank Eats was just there as well. Oh, but, nice. Uh, what, do you have anything planned on the docket while you're down there? Just some swinging it. R and R. Yeah, cenotes, hanging out, grab some food, some street tacos, and a lot of mezcal. There you go. Bird. Okay. All right. So we've done Spotify. Let's talk Netflix, gentlemen. What are we trending on? I mean, you mentioned the Kobe. It's tragic. Did you catch the Aaron Hernandez doc? Oh, no, not yet. Um, I, you know, to be honest, I've kind of been cycling. I had been cycling off TV for a while and just reading a lot, but. I just came back to The Outsider. Oh, dude, yeah. Which I'm, which I'm pretty pretty excited about. HBO. Yeah. I'm yeah. Not, I'm, it leaves me, it's a little fucking slow, but it's like, come on, man. Well, what we're, I'm, we're watching that right now, too. Well, and so, have you, are, are you up to date? I'm, I've watched the first three, and then okay. I'm halfway through the fourth one, and I'm worried because I feel like the first three episodes were really good, and I'm, I'm now worried the fourth one might suck. Wait, how many are we three right now? Four is just was aired this past Did week. Did you watch four? Yeah, we watched. Well, it was last night. Yeah. It was good? It's strong. Yeah, it, I mean, I mean, you're, like, you're getting deeper builds. into, you're you're still just wondering what the fuck, yeah. like, you know? Um, so it just kind of builds more on that kind of whole what's going on with. Well, what I like about it is, you know, I grew up watching the X-Files. 
Yeah. Um, and I'm a big DeCovney fan, just like you say, massive. Californication. Uh, God, he was great. There's so. nothing better than Hank Moody, Moody he, baby. He, he, yeah, never mind. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> he, I felt bad for him that show, but yes. <laughs> Um, boy, I, f- I feel like the outsider. It, it makes me wish that Stephen King wrote, you know, some of the X Files because I feel like this is kind of right up that alley. Yeah, because I'm thinking there's some type of virus involved. Cause that shit yeah. on that it's a scratch, oh, yeah. you know? It's all about a scratch. I don't know what's oh, happening. You don't know. No, to... I do. I do. Okay, the scratch I'm, is I'm pa- apparent. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, and then there's a couple subplots going on. So, mm-hmm. we're fired up, and we're going to have you come back on and join us, Braid, <laughs> because when the end of that season wraps, I'm thinking it doesn't look like it's going to be a three-seasoner. It's going to be like a true detective, like one yep. story, one, that's it. Mm-hmm. You know, so. That's what this is. It's it's half true. It actually might just be true detective might be the best. That first like season true of true detective that everybody just fucking loved. I but, just rewatched it. Oh, like, man. literally, in bed. With a, you know, <laughs> with like a... nothing. <laughs> I was going to say with a bottle of wine, I like, just knocked it out one day, but I literally watched it until like 4 a.m. I was like, this is such good television. So I fucking wrap it. There we go, Brad. Now, what was the name of this one again? I feel like I got to get on this. The Outsider. The Outsider. Yeah, it's on HBO and it, it's pops. And okay. It's not far behind. What are we? We're like three and a, four episodes in. Yeah, you can and you the, can catch up on that in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dedicate one day to sobriety. Yeah. Uh, so Miles, what are we hitting on on Netflix for our listeners at home? Uh, you didn't know about right it? now, I mean, I'm sure everyone's probably seen it, but I've been binging Ozarks. Okay. This, so, oh, Jason ba- that's also kind of got a little vibe to it as well. Yeah. Episode. Well, and he is he in that? He, well, he pro- yeah. Well, he's in. Well, I can't give you. He produced it, and he's oh, in a couple episodes. Gotcha. But um, is the new Ozark season out? I don't, the third. If one? it is, I don't fucking you know about old, it. Old, old I'm catching up. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I think I'm caught up at two seasons. Yeah. 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 That it's one, epic. That one will fire back. <laughs> I like to see how you're in touch with just getting back into the game of television. I love the where you are in the place. That's well done by you. Like, well, I got pulled back in by, you know, by this. Yeah, I mean, it, it slaps. I would also recommend The Witcher. I'm okay. not a video Ooh. game guy, but apparently it was a book as well. But everyone <laughs> recommended it, and it's got a lot of Game of Thrones to it. I, I watched half of the first episode, but I, not because I was bored, just because I was so tired I passed out. Yeah, okay. I appreciate you recognizing that the show did not cause that issue. Yeah, exactly. Are, I was just weren't, tired. We weren't the rewatchable. I did watch a hilarious – what's the uh, Asian dude from uh, Crazy Rich Asians, the comedian? Harry – oh, no, no. Ra, it starts with an R maybe. He, he just did a comedy show on Netflix where he just blasts America, and it's funny uh, as hell. I saw what you're talking about. Yeah. It's, it's not as easy. Is it a Z's? No. Yeah, it's like, he's, it starts uh, in the R, I want to say. He may be like Eastern Asian. Like, yeah, I, never watched he, I remember he was one of the groomsmen in the movie. Yeah, and, yeah. And he, I saw the stand-up. He was the rich guy that was like the asshole friend yeah. in the movie. I saw that stand-up. That one like, was so funny. Good. Yo, I was laughing I so hard I fell Asian asleep, actually. Ruins <laughs> I guess I just called Aziz and I'm sorry, an Asian and he's Indian. <laughs> Sorry. He's from South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was well, you know, I, I just heard like comedian blasts America and I was like, oh, well, didn't Aziz just do that? And so I knee jerk reaction, but please don't judge me for that. Uh, I mean, well, it's not up to us. It's up to the listeners. Yeah. Um, but that, I saw that. Fuck yeah. Okay. It's good. That's Very what good. I'm talking about. We'll take out edit, racist comment. <laughs> six minutes. <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding. We're not editing anything out. All right. So we've, we've kind of covered. Okay. Here's a good question that I just added. We're mixing it up in 2020. We want our listeners to know a little bit different stuff. When was the last time y'all got thrown out of the bar or a bar? And what is the most ridiculous thing you've gotten thrown out of a bar for? That's a submission from somebody. So shout out Space Angler. So I was just up in uh, Big Sky, Montana. And we, it was a karaoke night. This is actually like what last weekend, two weekends ago, something like that. Uh, Holy shit, you just did this? <laughs> I, I sang, uh, I sang Spin Doctors, Two Princes on karaoke, and I actually crushed it. Knocked out the party. Yeah, I absolutely did. Like people were up there partying. The dude who actually was running karaoke took the mic from me. And I ripped it back out, and he got mad at me and kicked me out. I was like, I just got this whole place rocking. You're trying to steal my glory right now. God damn it. 
<laughs> Kip nearly got kicked out of a karaoke bar not too long ago, too. I feel like those guys that are behind the bar or behind, like, the little banister where they take your name and paper, they take their jobs too seriously. Very like, seriously. It's like working at Casa Bonita. Like, you can't be the dickhead that's like, hey, guys, don't ask for signatures from the fucking divers. It's like, <laughs> let people live their lives over here. Don't be a cunt just to be a cunt. Your yep. job is meant to be around these people. Yeah, like just... Your, just cue the thing that shows you the song lyrics yeah. and plays the music. Don't be that guy. So I'm with you on that one, Miles. But uh, I swear to God, I don't think anyone knew. I just had submit questions for listeners, <laughs> and that one came up. And so I gave you that one. I did not know that, that happened recently. Yep. That's, that's fantastic. Literally, what, two weeks? MLK weekend? Was that two weeks ago? I mean, I wasn't there. I yeah. Never forget. That's Never awesome. forget. Uh, yeah. That was, that was <laughs> last month. <laughs> uh, Bray, can you beat that? Have you beaten up any of uh, or maybe have you gotten beat up? Well, I mean, I, I know the viewers can't see me, but I'm not much of a fighter. Um, I sound about as tough as I look. But Hi, I'm Kip. <laughs> I'm 170 pounds soaking wet. I don't, I don't know that I've made it out of a fight on my feet, I'll just say that. But I'm not. I mean, I've not gotten in many fights. Uh, but the last time I got thrown out of a bar, I think like eight years ago or so, a lot longer than two weeks ago, um, one of my best friends, it was his birthday, and we were at one up or two up downtown. Yeah. Oh, getting ready to just have this like epic time. I think we went to a Rockies game and so we're having fun and we walk in and just immediately my buddy uh I don't you know, I don't know if he puked on his shoes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> is, is what happened. I don't and I think in my head, like he told me the story and I was like, Nobody could have seen that. You puked on your shoes, that's a small it's gotta be a small amount of puke, you know, and I I thought it was an injustice and you know, handled myself as such and yeah, we all got we all got tossed out of there. And I haven't been back since. You Thrown know, up will get you tossed. Yeah, that yeah. or if you go to the bathroom on yourself. Both of those things are clear indicators that you don't <laughs> they're gonna take an L if you stay in so that You have been overserved. Yeah. I had a friend that pissed himself this weekend and he went about it so nonchalant like, yeah, I pissed a little bit of myself and I was like my college roommate pissed himself and then went and got a tattoo afterwards. And guess what the tattoo said? I pissed myself. So, so. Sorry for partying right yeah. over his heart. That yeah. is a true story. That is an awful tattoo. I bet that guy, you remember we were talking about Chad's and Brad's earlier? <laughs> his name's Lonnie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's a synonym for Chad. He, he just middle school football and yell yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Shout out to Lonnie. We appreciate your support. We know you're tuning in. <laughs> All right, guys. So we've done pretty well covering a couple of those things. But let's get down to the real nitty gritty. If you were murdered, who would most likely be the suspect? Brayden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a killer, bro. You oh, kind of look like the yeah. TV show Heroes. You kind of look like the bad guy from the movie Heroes. Uh, okay. Never saw that. <laughs> I know it's about heroes. Yeah, it's about people's superpowers. It's okay. Yeah, anyway. But it's okay. All right. So that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> you don't want to talk about here on the air? <laughs> I don't I mean, I guess I could snap. I don't know. I mean, any, any, anybody could, I suppose. Yeah. Most really introspective. But I. I told you we get pretty deep here on stage. Yeah. I think Miles, he Miles, he likes being around me a lot more after I've had a couple drinks, and you know, I guess maybe if you know I was really on edge and couldn't take the edge off. I, I don't think you're gonna kill me, man. I don't, it was just a joke. Yeah, it was total hypothetical. This yeah. is all, all hypothetical. Now you're saying a couple of cocktails so in. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm saying I think I might kill you. <laughs> Fuck yes. That's the way to go, Kip. These questions are Trying wrong. to steal, man, his argument is what I'm trying to do. So, Braden, that leads me to my next question. <laughs> if someone were to kill you, who would it be and why? I don't It would be some, like, random person. Like, I'm not very courteous when I drive. Um, and I, so I just, r- I just don't. Rage? It's just not the way I choose to live my life. And somebody would snap and kill me. In their car. Okay. Sounds like you got some serious road rage if you're outwardly. No, so I don't. He is no rage. Lewis and Clark rage. But I'll like cut people off and like, oh, just kind of do whatever. I don't. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, care. He has I mean, no just, idea. Like, yeah, gotcha. I don't even know that I'm picking. Right, I don't even know that I'm doing it until someone else is in the car. Yeah, you know. And, and usually it's me being like, "What are you doing? Yeah, Where are like, you going know, right man, now?" It's fine. We're, we're fine. I waved at him. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> they let me slide right in. It's yeah, good. Yeah. 
I have a friend that thinks bumpers are really for like love taps. They're mm-hmm. like, well, that's what it's there for. You just bump off of it. Okay. On the Road Rage tip, though, did you guys ever listen to Offspring? Uh, I don't yeah, remember a couple. Yeah, that song, Bad Habit, it doesn't sound like, I don't know. It was like one of my favorite songs. It was like the first song I think I ever heard the F word in. What was the first album you ever had? Uh, 